And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at Takenu, this Obelisk of the Sun. This is a very, very looked forward to game. The sequel to many of the other games that also start with T's in the series. Uh, Danielle Tacchini and David Turtsey are the two designers of this. Two designers I like a lot. This is a straight up get points somehow set in Egypt where there's shadow from an obelisk. That was the whole point of this game. There's a shadow casting a shadow and that's going to affect how the game works. Let's take a look. In Tech Henu, there's going to be 16 total rounds in this game. And a round essentially is just going to be a player, each player in turn order, and in this game, turn order is a really big deal, drafting a die. After each player has drafted two dice, then this is going to rotate one clockwise. Players will then draft two more dice. Then there's going to be a phase of the game, a mat phase, where players are going to be redetermining turn order and adding some more dice here. After two mat phases, there is a scoring phase, um, as well as a mat phase, and after the second scoring phase, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. You'll see there's a point tracker on the outside of the table where players will be getting points during the game, but you also will be scoring quite a few points at the end of the game. Players are going to start with a card, which will score them points, like for example, this one here gives you three points for building around the temple complex. Uh, here are three points per statue that you've built for the people. That's five points, I think, per statue you built for the people. One for each building that's no longer on your player board, etc. So each player will start with these. There's ways to get more of them. E also, you can get points from your player boards. Each player has a bunch of pillars they'll be building over the course of the game and statues. The more statues you build, if you build all um, six of your statues, you'll get 21 points. And also, you have these buildings. The more buildings you build, you're going to score points all the way down here to the end. However, the more buildings you build, you're also going to have to pay bread each scoring phase and if you can't pay enough bread you'll lose three points each. So players are going to be utilizing this board and they're going to be when they collect dice they're going to be taking dice and placing them on the two sides here of this scale and this is an important part of the game. When we look at the base of the obelisk here, you'll notice that there are going to be dice. There's dice of various colors. There's five colors of dice, black, white, gray, yellow, and brown. And depending on the shadow, so this is partially shadow, this is full shadow here. Depending on the shadow, the dice are going to go in different areas. So um, this is the way the game started here. So this shows that the gray, the black, and the white dice um, all go in the tainted area. And over here in this area, the yellow and the brown, and then no dice are in the forbidden area. If a die is in a forbidden area, so for example this brown die here is in the forbidden area, that die cannot be taken. You're only going to be able to take a die from, the, from one of the other two spots. But when you take that die, you're going to be adding it to your balance. Now when you take a die, there are two things you can do with it. One of the things is you can take resources with that die. The number on the die is how many resources you get and the color is is the type of material that you will get. So there are different resources in this game. I've already mentioned bread, but there's also papyrus, there is granite, and limestone. Also there's gold, which will show up over the course of the game. That's a wild resource. So you can take a bunch of resource with a die, although realize that is one of your 16 actions you'll take over the game, and add those resources to your pool. As I said, when you take these dice, you're going to place them on the pure or the tainted side, depending on where you pull the die from. If you take a die for resources, so this one here, for example, would give me six granite. You look at your current production for granite. My granite production is three. So I can only take three of those six. I've actually was greedy, and the extra stuff is going to be placed on the tainted side of the grail to show my greed. Now the reason you are taking these dice of different types is once you've taken four dice 
you're going to look and compare the two sides to each other. You want them to be as balanced as possible. This is in what's called a mat phase, and you want this to be even. In this case, it is 7, 8, 9, 10 to 10. If it was off, let's say it was 12 to 2, then I'm going to be balanced 2 towards the tainted side, but you can also be balanced toward the light side. As players are playing the game, you're going to be able to collect faith tokens, and you can use these to balance out a side one way to the other. So every mat phase, you're going to be comparing and see. So here maybe one player's balanced two to the light side. This player's balanced three to the tainted side. This person's dead on, and this person's also dead on. And so the turn order is going to be determined by this. Not only that, but the blue player, if you go too far on the tainted side, you're going to lose some victory points. Players will also be starting with one of these cards at the beginning of the game. This gives you some bonuses that you have. There's, there's actually a whole deck of starting cards, and players will be able to choose these starting cards that give really awesome resources and things, and the numbers will determine turn order for the first round. But after that, you're going to keep these cards, and if there's ever a tiebreaker, the number at the top will break the tie. However, then in the future, each player will pick one of these and they'll give you different benefits that you can use. So turn order is going to happen at four different times over the course of the game. At the end of the game, whoever's in the lead will get some bonus points. But being able to pick your action and take the dice first is a big deal. Now, I said you could take a die for the resources, but more often than not, you're going to take a die for the god action. Each of these different sections here corresponds with a different god, and that god tends to to point towards one of the areas that you will handle. And I'm going to go over these in a very brief way. There's a lot of different rules. But over here, you have a chance to um, basically build statues. The cost of the statue is actually printed on your board for each one in granite. And you'll be able to build public statues around the board, which will give you gold. Putting statues over in this section down here can help you control those regions. Putting statues up there gets points. Or you can put statues here. And when you put a statue there, whenever someone else takes a die for that section to use that god's power, you will get a bonus based on whatever it shows up here. And that can change every game. You can change the order of these gods from game to game. This god section up here will allow you to build pillars over in this area. So you'll pay a certain amount and you'll put down these spots here. You're going to get points for the sides that you match up. You'll get points for buildings that may already be out here. And if you put down this base here that matches the color shade that the die is and that you took it from, you'll also get a bonus. You also tend to get the bonus of whatever you put the pillar on top of. So pillars are one way to get a lot of points in this game. Having combos of pillars and buildings over here will score you points. In fact, that's what this section does, is it builds you buildings. Buildings cost bread depending on where you put them. You're going to get points for the pillars in a column or row that you place them. And you're also going to get resources in that row as you put down these buildings. Farther down here, you're going to be able, oh, and also whenever you build a building, you're going to increase your population. Your population will be moving along. And then you're also, down here, you'll pay Papyrus to move your happiness, the amount that it shows on the die. You want your happiness to get as far as you can because these triangles will give you points the farther your happiness gets. Not only that, but if we go to this section here, you get technology cards, and you can only take technology cards of where your happiness is. So I can only take this first one until my happiness hits the red area. Then I can take uh, technology cards from here, then from the green and blue area. You'll get those as the game progresses. They're not technically technology cards. They're just different cards that you can take. Depending on the number of the die, you'll get one, two, or three cards and have to pay Papyrus to do that. These cards are powerful one-time actions. Like here, when you take a die, set it to any value. When taking a die, decrease population happiness by one to get the opposite god action. That's across from it. So the white cards are one-time action. These are actual technology cards, and they give you special abilities. Whenever you do the Anubis action, uh, which is one of the god actions on the top board, you also gain three points. Here, when you do an action that has a die of value one, 
you'll score two victory points. Whenever you receive a Horus bonus from a statue, you also get a granite. So there are lots of different technology bonuses. And then as you as we continue down to these other sections, when they get filled in, you also have a chance to get more scoring cards here also. The final God section here lets you take your buildings and build them in these areas also. These don't score you as many points, although whoever has most buildings in each row will get points in a scoring phase, but they will increase your production levels on your player board and give you resources. So if you want your production levels to go up and have a chance to get a majority here, that's what you'll do. Now that's an overview of the gods very, very briefly. There's some more specific rules to each one. There's also things called scribes, which you can use to modify a die up or down, or you can even spend two scribes to take your forbidden die, one that you normally couldn't take, and when you take that one, you're simply going to put it down here. That's the Anubis god action, which if you had that technology, I would get three points for doing that also. And so there's various ways that you can manipulate and do things, but after two scoring, you're going to score these cards plus the points you've got for building pillars and buildings up there, for controlling having the most buildings down here, and from your victory point cards, and also from the statues and buildings that you've built. Whoever has the most points is the winner. When it comes to components, this is a really neat obelisk, right? It's a plastic obelisk that you put in here. It's really unnecessary. In fact, it's almost inconvenient because if you're sitting in the right spot, you may not be able to see the dice on the other side. This round piece that spins around the middle tells you which dice go in forbidden. I mean, at first I was like, how am I ever going to remember? And I realized this was upside down. Here, it actually tells you which dice go where. The dice are nice quality. I really like the, the bright colors of the buildings and the pillars. I am not a fan of the actual resources of the game. I think they're drab and dull looking. The board has all the information you need on it, but you can see there's a lot and you have to kind of figure out where that information is. I mean, each god action is printed there. So for example, here, um, the cost of a building is gonna be in bread. And then you're going to get one resource of everything that's in that row or column. And then you're gonna get three points for each pillar that you have in that same row or column. And then your population will go up based on the number on the die that you drafted. Do you get all that from that? I do now that I played the game, but do realize that there is a lot of that going on. I did think the rule book was very clear, very few things I had to wonder about on how everything fit together. So overall, I mean, I'm gonna give the components here. Uh, I think they're pretty good. And so it's unfortunate that the nicest looking thing in the game is also the most useless. Okay, well, right away, let's get out of the idea that, I mean, that's a really cool picture for the front of the box. I get it. Yay. And theme means pretty much nothing. This is a pile of mechanisms in a box. That's not to say it's bad. I mean, I love a lot of Tassini's games because of that. I like that he has all these mechanisms. And once again, everything in here works in tandem really well. It's interesting how this game works. I mean, they start out by saying there are two rounds in a rotation and two rotations in a mat and two mats in a scoring and two scorings in a game. And how many cats are going to St. Ives? It's that kind of idea. But at the end of the day, oh, 16 turns, which makes it a little crushing for me when I use one of my 16 turns of the game to grab a die and take resources. That is part of the game, but I don't know. I, that's the one thing that kind of just irked me a little bit. I get why it's there. And these production dials, they seem really cool. In fact, if you get them to the top, you get some bonus points. But the game is not so much about these, but about getting things out on the board. And while resources are tight in this game, they're not as tight as I thought they might be. Uh, other than that, though, it is entertaining. I mean, as you take a die, you're, you're going to find yourself paralyzed with so many cool decisions. Sure, the dice will go away, and after every um, mat phase, we put out more dice in the board. Based on every time the, the, the thing rotates, you're going to put out three dice in the shadow areas. So that even though some dice might be forbidden, there's still going to be dice that you can pick from. But I'm telling you, you're going to be irritated because you're going to say, that is the one die I want. That's the only die I've ever won in my whole life. 
and the person before you is going to take it. That's going to happen a lot in this game. Turn order in this game is, is more important, I found, than turn order in almost any game just because picking the dice early is that big of a deal. When you pick a die, you are thinking about the action that it possibly can be. You might be thinking about the color, but probably not. But, I mean, the color actually just determines where it is. So you think about where it is, and then you're thinking about how it's going to affect that balance of scales. That's cool. That's the basis of the game. The game's about getting resources to build uh, pyramids, uh, pillars, and buildings in one corner, build buildings in the other, build statues around. There's a lot of that going on. And I enjoy how it all comes together, but it is going to make you think. And to that end, I don't know how often I'm going to want to play this with four. Because not only are the three other players going to take the dice you want, but also you're going to find that there's going to be a while between your turns, especially if your turn is simply taking resources. I'll do this. I'll take five granite. Great. Now you go and you think for a while about the God action. You take the God action and you think for a while and you think for a while. So I'm a little hesitant to, to say four is a good number. Two or three feels a little bit faster as you go back and forth. And there's a little bit less of other people taking what I want. That being said, that's definitely there. Let no man say this is multiplayer solitaire because people are going to be consistently going back and forth and taking what you want. Now, my favorite part of the game are the technology cards. In fact, you would be highly unlikely to see me play a game with this. And at the beginning, when we draft the starting cards, to not pick the one that lets you draw two tech cards and keep one. Because a tech card can do all kinds of cool things. One tech card lets you take the forbidden dice. That's awesome. The other tech cards give you points when you do various things. Each tech card just feels like a really cool rule breaker. And the cards themselves, the one-time use, the tech cards, the end game bonuses, that's one major strategy you can be is getting those cards, getting your happiness high to score points that way. Um, another strategy is to do build a big conglomerate of p uh, pillars and buildings in the other corner. And then, of course, you can try to do a little bit of everything across the board. I feel like there's a lot of strategies I won't pretend that I've even dug that deep into any of them, but I can see that there. This game is going to be compared to Teotihuacan and to Zulkin and even maybe to Tristramestius, these games that are kind of in the same line. And I'm going to have to play these games a long time before I can determine which one I like the best. But this one is in the same class as the rest. It's I, I'm as good, I guess, as I suppose. I don't know if it's better or maybe slightly worse, but it's incredibly a solid game. It had, that, like I said, that whole shadow thing is a neat mechanism in theory, but it's more about a mechanism than about, oh, there's a shadow. Like, at first I thought, ooh, a physical shadow, but that no, it has nothing to do with the game at all. But there's a lot going on. You can pull off some pretty cool moves, like I'm going to use this scribe to lower this by one, to put it here, to even out my balances, to take this god action, which lets me put this here and get points. And you feel like you did something awesome. And I like that about the game a lot. There's a lot to unpack here in Tekkenu. Um, and I enjoy it. It's a deep, meaty style game, and one I think a lot of y'all will enjoy. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.